courtesy of the British Fashion Council. It's also been announced here, courtesy of my girl Linda. Big up, Linda. It's It Girl Energy on Twitter. Has provided the nominations, the nominations for Designer of the Year at the British Fashion Awards. This year's nominees are as follows. Oh, no, the, the actual category name, Designer of the Year. And the little blurb here says, it recognizes a British or international designer whose innovative ref- collections have made a notable impact on the industry, defining shape of the global fashion. The names suggested are... Chi, um, Chimina Kamali from Chloe, um, John Galliano from Maison Margiela, Jonathan Anderson for JW Anderson and Luebe, Musha Prada for Miu Miu, uh, Peter Mueller for Alia, uh, uh, Pietre Muliel for Alaya, and Rick Owens for Rick Owens. Obviously, if I was going to pick, you know where my pick could go. My pick would obviously go to my guy, Rick Owens. Um, secondly, I'll probably give it to Jonathan Anderson. I think he's had a very strong year. And then third, maybe. I'd give it to Misha Prada, but those would be my picks. I'd definitely go for Rick Owens or Jonathan Anderson for this year's Design of the Year. I think they've both had very, very strong years. Who do I think would probably win? Because of the fact, I don't know, if it's if it's based on like, I don't know, fashion insiders and shit, maybe the designer for Alaya might win. Maybe. Or maybe Misha Prada, because she's always a fan favorite. So I'm not too sure, but I'd definitely give Jonathan Anderson and Luebe. Just from the strength of just like, you know, designing for two labels at that level is really crazy. And they both have very distinctive voices. I feel like the the recent Rick Owens show was absolutely amazing too. I'm not sure if that counts, but that show spectacle wise was fucking phenomenal. So maybe I'd give it to him too. And just, you know, that legacy and how long he's been around, strong business, blah, 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 blah. Those are the people I'd probably give it to. But the one that's the most interesting for me, <clears throat> the most interesting this year to talk about has to be model of the year. And I say it's the most interesting thing to talk about because I feel like last year's decision to give model of the year to Paloma Elsner has kind of fucked up this year. This is probably why those participation trophies and, you know, virtue signaling and, you know, whatever, I guess diversity, you know, box ticking and shit. That's why all that stuff is really bad and very corrosive because when you do those type of things, however well intentioned they are, they sometimes have unintended consequences. And I think the unintended consequence of giving Paloma Elzina the model of the year award last year when she didn't deserve it and only giving it to her because she's a plus size model has now affected this year because Alex uh, Alex Konsani has had a really good year, but then I still think Anuk Yai should win it. So now you have two people who probably deserve to win it because if you would have given it to Anuk Yai last year, who deserved to have it last year because she had an amazing last year, then you would actually also have freed the way for somebody like an Alex Consani to get it this year, especially when you consider the impact that she's made on social media and whatever, maybe, right? That's what, especially, I think she's kind of like become like a fan's favorite model as well. And she's become people, a lot of people kind of root for. That'd be the way to go it. But I think that last year, fucking giving it to Paloma Elzina was such a bad decision. And I knew it was bad too, because a lot of the people online who I follow, who are kind of, you know, people that you would assume that would be a lot more, you know that would a lot ha- that would have a lot of feelings around why Paloma Elzner won it and would champion it. Even they were calling it out because Anuki I should have won. But I think the worst thing that Paloma Elzner did when she won that award because it's not her fault, right? You win the award, it is what it is. But she kind of was on social media too much. Maybe she was getting trolled too much. She decided to kind of post a couple of things, essentially apologizing for winning. And saying that Nuki, I should have won too. I was rooting for her. All this sort of like losery shit that you shouldn't do. Even if you win stuff that you don't deserve, you win it. You actually do the award. You actually are more respectful if you just take the award, be graceful, or be gracious and be, you know, and be thankful for winning it. But you're actually giving the people that you beat way more respect if you just accept the award as opposed to doing this whole feigning, oh, I don't really want this. No, 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 no. Accept the award, you know, have some um, have some respect for me and then keep it moving. It's not your fault. It is what it is. The game is rigged. But the worst thing that she could have done, the worst thing that Paloma Elzina could have done was this article that she posted or that she wrote, um, Courtesy of the Cut, where she basically tried to apologize for her existence. Like, absolutely pathetic. She should have never done this. And this kind of made things worse, to be honest. I'll read a bit to you now. It says, the price of being first, I made modeling history, then the internet made me wish I hadn't. 
It says, scroll down. It says here, on the afternoon of December 3rd, I was on my hands and knees at the Sunset Tower Hotel praying. It was the day before the Fashion Awards annual event put on by the British Fashion Council that honours designers, models and others. I was up for model of the year, yet all day I've been making silent pleas not to win. Can you imagine? Can you imagine opening your article like this? Like doing this type of losery shit. Like, she should have never done this, man. I understand why she did it, but she should have never done it. Please, God, don't let me win this award, I prayed. I simply do not have the capacity. When I was 22, studying psychology and literature in a new school makeup artist, um, Pat McGrath saw me on Instagram, and someone from her team sent me an email that would change my life. I started modeling, and in nine years since, I've achieved things I am deeply proud of, appearing on covers of American and British Vogue a few times, walking one ways worldwide, buying a home, and even releasing a book. Yet amid all those milestones, I've been afraid of feeling found out, constantly self-editing, trying to find balance between tender self-acceptance, unbridled self-hatred. Each victory for representation comes with a new flood of vitriol and a new wave of doubt. Maybe they're right. Maybe I don't deserve to be here at all. That has to be one of the hardest things people don't really understand. And even I'm kind of starting to, you know, meditate on as I'm reading this article. It must be really hard to be a plus size model. As much as people like to rag on plus size models, it must be really difficult because deep down, you know, you're only there because you're fat. You know, you know, you're only there because you're fat. No matter what your face card is giving, no matter how amazing you do look in clothes, you know, the only reason why you're there is because you're fat. And the fashion industry are basically tokenizing you. They're basically using you like a prop. They're basically take, you know, taking away, once they take away your agency, but they're basically using you to make themselves look good. They don't care about people that look like you. They don't care about the everyday woman on the street. They don't care about fat people. They're just using you and you know it. But the upside is the upside, which I've always said. I think I've said it to a couple of my friends who are kind of pursuing the whole DJ route, especially one particular girl who's got massive, massive boobies. And I was telling her, hey, embrace that. Use that to your advantage. Just make sure you don't go too far because once you go too far, there's no kind of turning back. And then you can't suddenly turn the rules. You can't then suddenly change rules on people and be that type of person, do it tastefully, of course, but use it to your advantage because these are the things God bless you with. Why wouldn't you do it? But in this particular situation, it must be really hard because if you start to embrace that label and that image and shit, you start to feel less than, you start to feel used, you start to feel cheapened, you start to feel like a commodity in some respects. And you know people on the outside too are looking and thinking you're a joke. So it's not only is there a lot of self-doubt about yourself, is there a lot of questioning yourself, but you know as well, you know deep down that you're not, only, you're, not on, you're not there on quote unquote merit. You're there because they want to make themselves look good. And you know, if you try to embrace it, you might make things worse. You know, so it's a really crazy situation to be in. Um, it continues as well. Um, it says the followers, I anticipated the backlash would unleash. Oh, this fat girl doesn't deserve to win. Oh, exclusivity is ruining fashion. But that night, winning was not on my radar. I generally believed it wasn't going to happen. I've been telling anyone who'd asked me that my friend and look, yeah, I would rightfully win. She has such a strong year and I'm overwhelmingly proud of and inspired by her and the other nominees. You see, I, I take this as a diss. I wouldn't like this sort of stuff. Like, don't talk, don't, don't like pity me. Do you know what I mean? I didn't win because the fashion industry is rigged, but don't start to pity me, especially if you're my friend. I wouldn't like this. I think she should have relaxed with all this stuff. Being a woman model, uh, being a bundle, sorry, comes with a rare type of loneliness. You sacrifice education, funerals, birthdays, friendships. Every day at work, you sit in the strange hotels with new faces. Longevity in the game is rare, especially if you don't fit the conventional mold of whiteness or thinness. All the while, many of us are helping our families back home. My fellow nominees are represent what it means to be a what it means to pre persevere in an industry that doesn't end, uh, center you. None of us are white. None of us are children of famous parents. All of us are working our asses off. I didn't even bother to preach, prepare a speech, sorry. So when Damson Idris, the presenter, called out, model of the year goes to Paloma Elza, um, I thought, start thinking of what you're going to say, bitch. I wove through the hall, lights flashing as peers and strangers stood up on their feet and cheered. Damson handed me an intricate amber orb, my award, and I tucked it under my arm amid my spotted words and sheer disbelief. I said, I feel very honored and I'm very shocked, but I'm also predominantly honored um, because I'm the first curved model to win this award. I felt shy and overwhelmed, but I meant it. <sighs> bittersweet, innit? That, that award in your house has to be bittersweet. That award in your house has to be bittersweet because you know why you got it and you know the reasons why you got it aren't legit. But then I also think 
nothing is legit these days you get what you can get out of life you figure out what you can figure out so just take it and keep it moving but i feel like that award that they gave to paloma elzina last year is the reason why this year's model of the year category is so hard to pick because if they would have given it to a yeah last year as you should have deserved it this year you can decide if you want to give it to alex consoni for like you know obviously some great work and clearly the social media presence and shit or if you want to give it to paloma but because you try to pick tick the boxes and do the good thing and appear like you're doing the right thing you've now fucked it and now you're in a position where you might fuck two people because imagine maybe alex consoni or nokia don't win either or imagine if, if, if nokia loses another model of the year award once again uh, despite having all of this amazing stuff that she did throughout the year this is courtesy of fashion spot look all the great sh shoots that i look yeah is done from july only these are posts from july only um a, you know a sh an editorial here from us vogue august 2024 looking obviously fantastic like just you know shoot after shoot after shoot of just amazing shit and then she doesn't win the model of the year like come on brother what's this one l august 2024 look how great she looks I think there's a Met Gala look here too, by the way, because that Met Gala look is incredible. So she should definitely win Model of the Year based on all of these bits of evidence here that I'm presenting to you. But there's definitely a likelihood that she won't win anything. You know, she will kind of go empty handed the second year in a row, which is fucking diabolical, considering all the amazing images that she's been a part of. Just great shit. Red carpet looks like just smoking it, smoking it. Pre Met Gala looks, killing it. Met Gala look itself. Anuk Yai became water in a futuristic tool katsu embellished with 98,000 glimmering blue crystals. Anuk look, Anuk's look sorry, was complemented by a high jewelry necklace from our galaxy collection crafted by 1,050 laboratory grown diamonds. Look at that. Incredible. How can that person not win model of the year? Like, look at that. Jesus Christos. But again, when you fuck around and you tick the diversity boxes, the Met Gala after that, she killed all the looks in it. Pre-Met Gala, Met Gala look, and the after party. Just absolutely destroying. No, 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 no. So let's see what happens during the Model of the Year Awards. Most likely she won't win anything and it will just play the way it plays. But hey, this is where we are. This is where we are. This is where we are.